Welcome to Crossroads Online Experience. Thank you so much for being part of our online family. No matter if you're engaging with us today through Facebook, YouTube, or another social media platform, we believe that life change is going to happen today in your life. And so no matter where you are in this world, I pray that you engage with us today as we search scripture and the truths that God has given each and every one of us. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and we're excited to hear about your life change story. that this morning? You really believe it? Let's ask our God to do it again. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to proclaim by faith this morning that we believe that you can do it again in our lives, God. God, we believe that you can renew our faith back to that day when we were so on fire with you, God, that that we couldn't have enough of you, we were never satisfied, that we always wanted more, God. We believe that you can do that again, God. Lord God, we believe this morning that you can help us to overcome that habit in our lives, God. We believe that you can do it again. God, we believe that you are greater than this addiction. God, we believe that you're greater than this attitude. God, we believe that you're greater than this unbelief. God, we believe that you can do it again, renewing us, God, this morning. God, we believe this morning. By the simple touch of your finger, God, top of Chase's head. The cancer has to leave in the name of Jesus. We believe, God, that you can heal again. We believe, God, that you can restore again. We believe, God, that you're all powerful and you never have given up that power, God. And we believe that you are our healer, our sustainer, our sufficient one. There's nothing too great for you, God. We believe that you can do it again. God, we ask you by faith to do it again. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I get a little emotional. I'm sorry. Uh, Just, Corbin, that is an amazing shirt you've got on. Wow. Wow, I didn't know. I love that drill. You got some drill. Students, Pastor Greg got some drill. (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh. Wait. You know, you, there you go. Yeah. See, Corbin was wanting to look like me, but I, I decided I'd just look like him. Oh uh, my gosh. I've been working on my tan. I'm not quite there yet. Yeah. Let's <laughs> uh, stay in the sun a little bit longer, uh, buddy. Exactly. <laughs> You know, this is, a, this is a great, great morning because uh, we, we get to talk about students. Yeah. Yeah, I know that's on your heart, but what excites you most about like graduation weekend? Uh, I think it's the, the piece of transition. Mm. That is the part where mm. students who was once boys and who were once girls are now getting ready to embark on adulthood. Yeah. And while that's scary, mm. uh, there's some excitement with that as well. That's right. Uh, so I think that's the thing that really gets me excited because I'm one of those types who I love adventure. I love the thrill. Yeah. So I know it's scary, but it's also an exciting time as well. Mm. You know, for me, I think the, uh, when I think about graduation weekend, not just for high school students, yeah. but for college students as well, because mm. there's such a, a large group of people here that are taking that next step. Uh, what, what comes to my mind mm is when I think of all four of my kids who have all finished high school and, mm-hmm. and they're, you know, in the workforce, uh, I think maybe what Jesus' parents had to go through. Wow. You know, when the scripture tells us in the, in the book of Luke where it says that he grew in wisdom, mm-hmm. you know, and, and he grew in, in stature, mm-hmm. and he also grew in favor with God wow. and man. Wow, yeah. And when you, when you think of the life of Jesus, I think uh, that, that growth time is, is, is paramount. Mm. But I think of it from the parents' perspective. Yeah. perspective because, you know, I, I'm not, it's been so long since I've been that teenager. And really? That, that, yeah, it's been a little while. Oh, wow. 
I know you when, can't tell, but I can't I'm just tell. a hide it well. That's you look what it amazing. Is. <laughs> Pastor goes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, my man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, one of the things that's, that I think about, I'm going to move so I won't, we're, I think we're buzzing off of each other. It must right. be the shirts. Must yeah, be the shirts. It is. No, it's the drip. Can it's you say drip? Drip. drip. Say? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't picked that term up. That's what my my wife asked me: "Is the coffee dripping yet?" So I don't know what you, I don't know what that uh, that means. So I got to get that Urban Dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but isn't it great to have fun in church? Yes. Man. Amen. Amen. And it, it, it makes me it makes me laugh because you know we as parents when we think about uh, sending our kids to the next level. Uh, we want everything to be perfect. And, you know, I think of the life of Jesus, though. You know, it says that he grew in this way. And in, in his parents' role in his life, you know, I know it was God the Father, but he gave, uh, he gave him earthly parents. Can you imagine the day that they left the temple after being there for the celebration? And it took them three days before they realized that Jesus was missing. And that, when I read that, it, it gives me hope as a parent, you know. I mean, if, if Jesus, if God chose these people, I mean, I've not left my kid for three days yet. I've thought about it, but I haven't done that yet. And when we think about this time in, in transition, because, you know, when they left, there was a transition for them to load up all their stuff. And in that transition, I think, is when we become most volatile in, in our parenting and most volatile as students. And so as parents, it's the transition that we have to understand and what God wants to do. Because here's what God tells us as parents. Train them up in the way they should go. And when they grow old, they shall not depart from it. Now, training means to, to, to discipline, to direct their lives, to mold them. You know, we've been doing that for a long time, right? You've been training and training and training. And sometimes we just feel like we don't have the right manual. I understand that. But the whole process of training, he says, training them in the way. In other words, it's, it's molding them in a direction is what he's saying. And so you got to know the direction that you're molding in in order to get them ready. But the, way, the whole process here is what God has given us as parents the responsibility for. Or, and when graduation comes, something else happens. What happens? What you've been training them for. You see, you don't train to keep them. You train to let them go, all right? And I know that gets confusing, right? It doesn't. Let's try that again. Let's, let's clap for Jesus one time, all right? There we go. There you go. And it's so difficult, though, for us as, as parents because, you know, when, when you're training, you've got control of them, don't you? It says you do, you do what I tell you to do, and if you don't, there's consequences, right? And, you know, after they become teenagers, then that doesn't work so well. You sort of have to adapt your plan a little bit, and now they become adults, and that plan doesn't work hardly at all anymore. And so you and I have to come up with a different strategy, and God's already given us the strategy. The strategy is to train them up and let them go. Isn't that scary? I mean, listen. It reminds me of the 2008 Olympics. And you remember the baton pass in the 400 relay. And as they were getting ready to pass the baton, you know, I had to look at their names. I always forget but Ty, this, this, this Tyson Gay and, and David Patton. And so as, as they're getting ready to pass the baton, Patton's coming up to Gay and, and, and he's, he's, he's reaching out with the baton and, the, and they, they tell the story of, of how, how he was reaching back and, he, and he's waiting to feel the baton in his hand. And all of a sudden, uh, the other guy lets it go and he closes his hand with no baton. The hardest thing in life and the hardest things we'll ever face in life happen in the transition. 
that's when we're most volatile. That's when we feel the volatility. That's when we, we embrace this, this idea of, of what we think it's gonna be like, but it doesn't always turn out the way that we want it to be. And so then we begin to panic, we get scared, we get fearful. And so in this transition with our kids and our students and college students, as you as parents begin to pass the baton, and if you hadn't passed it yet, one day you will, your kids are growing up. When you pass it, I want you to understand something. That is the most volatile time because it's the time that often we don't know how to let go and we don't know when to let go and so when you don't know how and you don't know when that's when you actually sometimes drop the baton because you don't make a clean transition and what God wants us to understand is is listen your responsibility as a parent is to equip to train to let go and send them out because they have to be adults and you're sitting here thinking but 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 Greg what if what if they don't turn out right Are you God? When you pass the baton, that doesn't mean that God steps off his throne. You understand? God gave you the tools to train. Now God wants you to have the tool to trust in the training and trust in a God that's bigger than you and I that can do anything. But when our fear, you gotta understand why you're afraid. You see, sometimes we're afraid because we're afraid our kids will make us look bad. Can I tell you, we do that all on our own. <laughs> we're afraid because we're afraid our kids are gonna fail. Can I tell you, they are. Amen. Amen. But failure is not ultimate until you quit. Amen. So don't let yourself gravitate into fear of letting go of the baton. Let yourself gravitate into the place of faith where you trust God to pass the baton with you so that they can become, amen? <laughs> so they can become what God designed them to become. Your part shifts when you pass the baton. And this is how it shifts. You are no longer the boss. You're no longer the owner. You now stand on the sideline as a coach and you get to cheer with everybody else. You get to build them up. You get to spur them on. As the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, to, to spur them on in this faith, to keep them going in this faith. That's what your role is. They call you on the phone. You encourage them. They call you on the phone and they're down. You encourage them. They need advice. You don't beat the advice into them. You simply give it to them. Yeah. Amen. Because now their responsibility is solely to God. Not to make you look good, but to make him look good. And so it's so hard in every area of life, but it's so essential to pass the baton. Hmm. Hmm. So the baton is in my hand. For every student that's in this room under the sound of my voice, and whether you are a student graduated from high school, getting ready to go to college, or you're getting ready to graduate from college, but get this, every person under the sound of my voice is in the middle of a transition. You may be transitioning from being engaged to being married, from having one child to two. Everybody in this room is under the sound of my voice. You are in the middle of transition. But can I tell you this, if there's one thing that I've seen that has made people drop the baton in the race. It's not the handoff, but it's the pressure of the handoff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every student, <laughs> under the sound of my voice, I need you to get this. And every person that's in transition, it's not so much of the baton passing that you're worried about, but it's the pressure behind the baton. And so what the enemy would love for you to do is to begin to get in your head and say this, I can't do it. I'm not, I'm not worthy of this. I can't do it. I can't make the transition. I need mama and daddy. I'm not good enough. But this morning, may I tell you that that is a lie from the pit of hell. That is a lie from the pit of hell. The baton has been passed to you, but this is what the Holy Spirit showed me. And I was about to kick one of my kids when he showed it to me. 
I'm for real, bro. You can ask my wife, like, when God gave me this revelation of what I'm getting ready to tell you, all of us was running through the house like, oh! Because I started doing it and my boys started copying me. The Holy Spirit showed me this. The way that you relieve pressure is that you apply wisdom. The way you relieve the pressure of the baton passing is that you apply wisdom. And wisdom is knowing what's right and choosing to do it. Applying wisdom, it said this, that Jesus grew, he increased in what? Wisdom. But one of the tricks of the enemy, it's no new trick, he do it every single time. As you're in the middle of a transition, what the enemy wants you to do is for you to unplug instead of stay plugged in. There's no new tricks. Think about your worst mistake that you've made in the middle of a transition from high school to college, from college to adulthood. And where you are right now, think about the worst mistake that you made. It's because you unplugged instead of plugging in. And this morning, what I want to tell you this morning is right now, student, I need you to change your perspective from freedom from something instead of freedom for something. So you're not free to do what you want. If you want wisdom, if you want to save yourself the scars, because wisdom is there to help prevent you from the scars. That's why your parents can look at you and say, hey, you can't hang around them. I remember growing up and my mom, I'm talking about, I just bring them to the house. And by the time they walk out the door, she'd give me one of them, "Uh -uh." (laughs) uh-uh. I'd be like, what? What's going on? "Uh -uh." (laughs) Uh-uh. Talk. I don't speak that type of language, mama. "Uh Uh-uh. He ain't for you. That's all she would say. (laughs) She ain't for you and walk right off. I'm like, what? But it's wisdom. It's wisdom saying, son, listen, I want to prevent you from these scars. Holy Spirit said the way you prevent the scars is that you apply wisdom. So student in this room, listen, applying wisdom is going to make you look different amongst your friends. It's going to make you look different. Get this adults in the room as well. It's going to make you look different in the transition at your job. Once you begin to apply wisdom, yes, it's going to hurt. Yes, it's going to be painful. But Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11 says this right here. Can we put it on the screen? No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Hear me this morning. Hear me. The way you relieve the pressure is that you have to apply wisdom. It's not going to make you feel good, but it's going to work out for your good. Ah, that was good. I'm preaching right now. It don't matter what transitional phase that you're in. This morning we're talking to graduates, but you're in the transition as well. But I'm here to tell you, listen, that this one, it's going to hurt. You choosing wisdom is going to hurt. But on the other side of you choosing wisdom, it's not scars, but it's peace. On the other side, instead of scars, you're going to have righteousness, right alignment with God. Because at the end of the day, that's the only thing that matters. It's not what school you graduate from. It's not who you marry, but it's who you serve. So the pressure behind the baton passing, it said this in the text, Luke chapter 2, verse 52. It said he grew, and this word grew, also increased. If you look at the translation behind it, it's a hard road. But he grew in that type of wisdom because he knew on the other side there's righteousness, right alignment with God, and there's peace. And so this morning, the way you relieve the pressure is you grow in wisdom. The way that you relieve the pressure of you going from high school to college or you graduate from college or whatever transitional phase that you're in, you apply the wisdom because the enemy wants you to disconnect. But this morning, listen, I want you to look at it, freedom for So now you can be freedom for the wisdom of God. So once you transition from going from church, from this church, you can go to another church. And understand this, that I can give everything I have to God at that church. Because it's not crossroads over Christ, but it's Christ over crossroads. Make sense? Because you have to stay connected to the thing that was giving you wisdom. So you don't have the scars. Are you with me, church? Also, in this this text, in this text, Luke chapter 2, verse... uh, uh, 52 it says it's Jesus increased he grew in wisdom and this is the one that I've been ready to get to since I, me and Pastor Greg was talking about this it said he grew in stature when you look at this the definition of this is physical but it was another part in the uh, definition that stuck out to me it said this that he grew in maturity one sign of maturity is this right here that you let the private become public 
Hear me. Ah, I'm about to smack. Some. Listen, I got to get this out of me because this is the part that's getting me. Student, if you want to know a person that's in the middle of a transition, you want to know if you're mature, the person who you pretend to be in public needs to be the same person you are in private. Get this. Get this. Get this. If there's one thing that I've seen, especially when it comes to your walk with Christian, and that's a person too, don't try to put on in public, but you're really mad in private. Hear me, don't talk about the freedom of God in public and you bound in private. You can't talk about love in public if you bitter in private. You can't do it. You can't mask like I want to do it for God, but really in your heart in the private, you have selfish, selfish ambition. You can't do it. But here's, here, here's the thing that I want to tell you this morning. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I say this every single time because this is a message of my soul. God cannot heal what you don't reveal. So that's why you have to give it to him in the private so he can manifest it in the public. Ah, That's what you need to do. I feel like preaching this morning. Because many people in the transition, they miss this part. They miss the having character part. Because here's the God honest truth. You can't Instagram integrity. (laughs) You can't. You can't Snapchat salvation. Because Snapchat is a moment. Salvation, you mark forever. (laughs) You can't fake that. So student, in this room, under the sound of my voice, if you get anything, you let God relieve the pressure with his wisdom, but you begin to work on in private what you want to see in the public, because Jesus knew this. I was looking at a story in the Bible that blew my mind. And it's just to echo this point about let the prophet become public. So Jesus was having a conversation with the church people. In Matthew chapter 15, they are the Pharisees, who I like to call them. Jesus was sitting there having a conversation with them. They got to debating over transition, I mean over uh, tradition. Jesus looked at them and said this in Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. He said this, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. Because Jesus knew this public action was driven through a conversation in private. They honored him with his lips, but they was talking behind his back. They was honoring him with his lips, but they really didn't want nothing to do with him. This is what the Holy Spirit showed me. He showed me this. He said, Corbin, the gateway to your private life is your heart. It's your heart. As you're in this transition, you have to work on your heart. Student in the room, you have to begin to work on the inside of you, not the outside of you. The Holy Spirit said, listen, it's in the heart. It said, out of the heart flows the issues of what? Life. Out of the abundance, the heart, the mouth speaks. So all of this starts where? In your what? The way you produce what you want to see in the public is this. You start giving God your heart in the private. As you in this transition, I need you to get this. Because many of you, you are in transitional moments right now in your life. The baton has been handed to you. But right now, you need to begin to say, God, fix me. Not from the, in, uh, the outside in, but the inside out. Because that's what produced character. That's what you need. And then in the text, it said this. That Jesus grew. He increased in wisdom and stature and maturity. And then it said, this is my favorite part. He grew in favor with God and with man. Listen, now this is the part that jacked me all the way up. Because that word favor is translated to the word grace. That student, if you want to stand out amongst your friends, you need to stand up with God so you can stand out with people. (laughs) Hear me. Hear me. This is the part that got me. That word translated favor is grace. And as I began to study this, it said that Jesus grew. He increased in favor with God. So he increased in his grace with God. Get this. This thought came to my mind. How can our God, Jesus, on this earth, increase in God? This is what the Holy Spirit showed me. He said, Corbin, Jesus was fully man and fully God. Get this, this is the part that got me. He said, Jesus would never ask you to do something that he didn't do. You don't believe me? It's in the text. Look at Luke chapter 2, verse 46 and 47, I think. It said, when Mary and Joseph lost Jesus, Jesus was in the temple asking questions. He was 
growing in that grace of who God is. And I want to tell you this morning, student, as you're in this transitional phase, the foundation that you need to have is that you're growing in grace with God. Because as you begin to grow in grace with God, your grace will spill over with people. Get this, the reason why you need to stand whole, true, fast in this grace, because I don't want to stand up here and tell you as you're in this transition, every day going to be good. Because every day not going to be good. But one thing that you can stand on in the good days or in the bad days, that you can stand in this grace that's found in Jesus Christ. Amen. Get this, get this, get this. You grow in grace with him, and in the difficult days, he'll give you grace to handle them. That's the picture of the cross, ain't it? You give, you grow in that grace, and he'll give you grace for them. So this morning, every student that's under the sound of my voice, if you're graduating from college, whether you in transition from high school to college, my heart is this, that you truly do grow in that wisdom, that you increase in that wisdom so it can help you relieve the pressure, that you grow in stature, that you work on that private so the, the outcome of your public is amazing. But the most important part is this, I want you to, I want you to, I beg you to grow in grace with God so you can stand out amongst men or you can give grace to men. So as the band get ready to come out, uh, if you're in the transitional phase, if you're graduating from high school and you're going off to college or you're a college graduate in the room, I would love for you to stand to your feet and we want to pray for you down here real quick. Pastor Greg, want to pray a prayer over you. You can go ahead and come down here to the front if you're a graduate in the room, graduating from high school, or you're graduating from college, Pastor Greg would love to pray. I also want to invite I the pray. parents down of these yeah. kids. Uh, and if you're one of their teachers or student leaders, you come yeah. down with them because you've had a part in their life. Uh, Y'all just come on down here and stand in the front. This may be a little bit weird for you, but you know what? Uh, we do weird things here at Crossroads, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. Friday. Whether you realize it or not, this is a huge time in their life. I remember yeah. graduating from high school and it's like I, I left the, the next day and I didn't go to high school. I was wondering what's next. And there was this weird emptiness that you, you just uh, begin to feel. And, and I want you guys to know that the God that got you this far is the God that will take you the rest of yes, the way. Yes, yes, yes. And that he can do exceedingly abundantly far beyond what you think or imagine. So dream big. Dream big for God. Don't hold back. Don't let anybody hold you back. Our God is a big God. Amen. I'd like to invite, if we have any of our elders or other staff, I want y'all to just come and stand around these people and, and, and all these students. And just lay hands on them as we pray for them. Y'all just work your way around this way. The rest of the congregation, where you're seated, where you're sitting, I want you just to hold your hand up, extend it towards them. And let's pray for these students. Let's also pray for these parents right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the name that is greater than any other name, the name that made Satan tremble in fear, the name that cast out any evil spirits, the name that makes sickness bow, the name that gives us hope, the name that gives us a future, the name that can change anything about us, an attitude, an action. It is that name right now that we pray by. And God, I pray that in the name of Jesus, you would empower these students, God. That you empower them to grow in wisdom. That you empower them to grow in stature, God. That you empower them to grow in grace with God and grace with man. And I pray, God, in whatever their next step is in life, God, that they would realize they don't take that step alone, but the power of Jesus Christ goes with them. The power of the Holy Spirit is there leading and guiding them. And Lord God, when the obstacles of life come, I pray that they would look to the God that's bigger than their obstacles, God. 
I pray, Lord God, against the spirits of this world, Lord, that would try to remold them and reshape them into this image, God. I pray, Lord God, that they would decide today for the rest of their life, they're going to walk in wisdom. They're going to walk in statute. They're going to walk in the power of God so that they don't have to worry about what man thinks about them because God is living through them and man desires what they have, God. God, I thank you right now for the victory that they have over this world because he who is in them is greater than he that is in this world. God, I pray for the parents and grandparents and those that will be there coaching and cheering on God. I pray, God, that they would have a spirit of encouragement, Lord. Lord, that we wouldn't exasperate them, but that we would build them up. That we would encourage them. God, that we would, we would uh, help them to think big and to dream big, to dream by faith, not by sight, God. And Lord God, in those times where our faith is weak, Lord, we just want to be falling on our knees and praying for them, God, realizing that you can do far more than we can do, God. And Lord God, we just entrust them into your hands, knowing that you will see them through, God. There is nothing impossible with you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Right now, we get ready to transition into another song. But I'm not crazy. As you was listening, there's a group of people in this room, as you was listening to me and Pastor Greg talk about the baton passing moments, there's a group of you in this room who heart is broken because you feel like you didn't pass the baton well. And when you look at your child now, you're like, I didn't train them to be that way. And now you feel all this guilt, shame, and condemnation. But this morning, what I want to tell you is no matter if you drop the baton or not, grace God's grace is sufficient for you this morning. His grace is sufficient. So no matter where you are right now, if you are a student in the room and you didn't take the baton well, this morning I want to tell you that his grace is sufficient. No matter how much you have messed up, God is not mad at you. He misses you. And so this morning, as we get ready to transition into this song, we're going to have the prayer team down here up front. And we want you to come down because we want to pray over you. We want to walk with you to let you know, listen, you're not a failure. His grace is there. His mercy is there for you this morning. So this morning, I want us to all stand to our feet as we worship. But if that's you this morning, we would love for you to come down so we can pray with you. Thank you again for joining us today. We are so excited that you are part of our online family. In fact, we would like to walk along this journey with you. So if you made any type of decision today, if you will go below, there is a website there that will help us engage with you and be a part of your next steps. We cannot wait to see you again next week because we believe that God has a message for you.